I call the Honourable Member Carmel Cepaloni. Thank you very much, Mr Speaker. Maloli Lei. Maloli Lei, Mr Speaker. It, it really does um, sadden me to stand and speak to this bill, not because we don't support the bill, because we do, but because, Mr Speaker, it doesn't go far enough. There's much more that needs to be done. There's much more that isn't being addressed. And also, Mr Speaker, what it forces us to do is reflect on the harm that has been inflicted on so many of our children in New Zealand. Uh, Mr Speaker, when looking at this bill, we can't help but think of the Kahui twins, as mentioned by uh, Mr Maclay. We can't help but think of children like Dalcelia Whitaker, um, baby Serenity, um, James Whakaruruho, um, and many other children that have um, been treated so incredibly, incredibly badly. And all of us that have children can't even imagine what would drive someone to do this to their own children or to, to somebody else's, Mr Speaker. Mr Speaker, our concern really is that although we support this bill, that a lot of what the government is doing is not going to address the issues that um, actually cause um, this abuse to happen. We've had many reports put out recently that raise the awareness and draw the correlation between poverty and child abuse, and yet nothing has been done to address the extreme levels of poverty that we as a country are facing. The government is failing New Zealand on that front. They talk about child abuse and the ne neglect and ill-treatment that is occurring, and yet what we see is a domestic violence bill that was widely consulted upon that continues to languish at the bottom of the order paper. Last time I checked, Mr Speaker, before today, it was at number 58 on the order paper. And today, sadly, I look at the order paper and see that it is now at number 72. So it is difficult to take the national government serious when they talk about, seriously, when they talk about things like child abuse and the need to address the child abuse that's occurring in this country when something that should be considered urgent, something that should have been treated with a level of urgency, instead has just been pushed further and further back down the order paper. Mr Speaker, we of course support any, measure, um, any measures to prevent and mitigate, mitigate the harm against a a child abuse, Mr Speaker. However, we have reservations with certain provisions and their ability to be effective in combating the actual problem. According to Power, the new offence of failing to protect a child or vulnerable adult will hold accountable household members who fail to notify authorities of abuse. It will no longer be an excuse to say you were not involved in the abuse. Standing by and doing nothing makes you involved in this bill. According to Power, makes this clear. Mr Speaker, I have to say that really the government has an appalling record when it comes to looking after the most vulnerable children in our society. Multiple reports this year, multiple reports this year have highlighted the plight of children and while we support any efforts to combat child abuse in New Zealand, the government has failed overall to protect children from poverty-related harm, which extends to abuse, Mr Speaker. Um, just, I think, last week or the week before, I attended the launch of He Araho, the Pathway Forward, getting it right for Aotearoa's New Zealand and Pacific um, children. And some of the comments there made were in relation to the poverty that our children are um, living in, are experiencing. And we know that that poverty, with, with high levels of poverty, we we are at risk of higher levels of abuse as well. And so we wonder why we have a national government who is failing to address the level of poverty. Manuka Henare, who did a lot of work on that report, said that the single most um, important uh, moral issue that we as a country are facing really is the poverty that we as a country are experiencing. And what concerns me is that although Māori and Pacific only make up about 22%, I think, of the overall population, we make up over 50% of the numbers of children who are in poverty, Mr Speaker. Just over 200,000 children in poverty and just over 100,000 of them are Māori and Pacific. So there's something wrong there, and that, that, 
That issue is something that is not being addressed by the national government. And despite their attempts to address the issue, um, if they can't address the real issue, which is the poverty that our children are experiencing, the poverty that their parents are living daily, then we, th this kind of legislation will do little in the way of actually alleviating the problems that we face, Mr Speaker. Mr Speaker, we've heard um, from the government about their green paper. We saw it all over the news when it was launched. But what one school principal in Waitakere said to me was, if this really is an urgent problem, if the abuse of our children really is an urgent problem, then why would they not push legislation that, that addresses it until its full extent, really addresses it, through urgency in Parliament? Because that school principal knows that the national government have no problem using urgency um, in this House when it suits their needs, when it means pushing through things like national standards, which we had no evidence base whatsoever, and were not, was not going to do to anything to alleviate the problem of abused children. Um, we've seen urgency pushed through with regards to um, workers' rights, um, the 90-day fire at will bill, which again will do nothing to, to address the problem that we're facing with respect to abused children. We've seen the Warner Brothers and the Hobbit legislation push through an urgency, which again does nothing to address the problem that we as a country are facing with respect to child abuse. All of these pieces of legislation that the na national government prioritised and deemed urgent, and yet it does nothing to address what should be the, the main issue of priority for any government. And it is the national government's shame. When that paper was launched, I think we all saw the media coverage of it. And afterwards, I had a few conversations with people that were involved. Isn't it interesting that they decided to take um, the woman that heads the organisation, the Nation's Advocates for the Rights of Kids. Isn't it interesting that the Minister of Social Development sent her the paper three days in advance and said that we will allow you to speak on the day that we launched this paper, that we want you to comment on this paper and tell us what you think? Oh, really? and, yes. And when the, when the leader of that organisation got back to the Minister of Social Development and said, actually, I do have some points to make. There's some things that I think um, aren't addressed or aren't addressed well in this. And I would like to comment on that on the day that we launch it, because you've said that we can, I can comment on this. Isn't it interesting that then the Minister of Social Development held her here, but no longer gave her the right to speak on that paper? It's not going far enough. There are so many things that have been pushed through in urgency by that national government. Nothing that addresses the issues that we are facing. Nothing that addresses the issue of child abuse that we should be taking seriously as a parliament. Someone raised earlier the issue around um, family violence during the, well, the, the, the issue around increased family violence or the risk of it during the Rugby World Cup. This is another area in which the national government have fallen down. They have done nothing to increase, increase funding to the family violence organisations over this period of time, despite the fact that we know through all of the research that when you hold big sporting events like this, there will be increased levels of um, drinking and there will be increased levels of violence, but instead it's silent and instead nothing has been done to address it. I look at this bill and I think, yes, yeah, sure, we're going to support this to select committee, but at the end of the day, we know that it will do very little, um, very little to actually address the problems that we face as a country, that it won't help us to avoid situations like we have confronted in the past, like we've experienced in the past, um, and that it will do very little to protect our children. Mr Speaker, thank you very much. I call the Honourable Member.